Hi, welcome back to the Dylan Rounds case. Welcome if you're currently here in the live chat. Appreciate it. Today, we're going to be continuing the discussion about Dylan, the case itself. Feel free to share your thoughts, opinions and reactions in the live chat on the right hand side as we do go along and you can talk about a range of things in between. We're specifically looking at that forum page, looking back and continuing on what's been talked about at the time, see if there's anything of interest, does it generate any new ideas, does it bring up key points which were forgotten about, all of that, okay, continue that. In addition, we're going to take a look at the Find Dylan Rounds Facebook page as there are some new posts on there, one of which by Candice Cooley. So we'll read through them, see what it's all about, see the responses of others, if there's any updates about the case as a whole. And um, yeah, if you haven't already, feel free to check out my previous video on the Dylan Rounds case. Interesting comparison of two different locations and items found. I'll provide a link down below in the pinned comment section so you can watch that video after watching this one, okay? And yeah, I mean, still people are on good behaviour, still people are continuing the discussion elsewhere and here, here and there, so that's all good. Um, only experienced one technical issue recently, which isn't as bad compared to all the ones in the past, is I've noticed the view counter on my videos, what you see kind of like the left hand side of the screen underneath the video being played, it gives like a number of how many people are actively watching live. The problem is it doesn't update for me unless I close the tab or refresh it. Now normally it would automatically, you know, change the numbers, whether it goes up, if more people are watching or goes down if people have left, but it's frozen. So I've reported that to YouTube, don't know if they'll fix it or if they can or if they can be bothered or if they'll even hear about it, but there you go, just yet more stuff happening, okay? So don't know how many people are currently watching at the moment, but of course, welcome if you're here. We'll move on to the Find Dylan Rounds Facebook post first of all, try and understand them, and then we can move on to um, the forum, okay? Here is the first post five days ago by Offal Lewis. What does he have to say? I am in no way trying to take the focus off Dylan. My thoughts and prayers have been on him since I first heard of this young man being missing. I've seen how you have to fight to push for them being found by his family, Candice Cooley and Justin Rounds. You have my respect and thoughts as well. I just want to mention I hope Candice and Justin might reach out to David Robinson as his son went missing in Arizona few months before Dylan and he is another father trying to fight for justice for his son. My thoughts and prayers have been on this young man as well. It is so very hard to have closure without hard evidence for your loved one. I do sincerely hope these young men are found. Just a quick question. It's uh, David Robinson, the father of the missing person Daniel Robinson, if I'm correct in saying. And has this got anything to do with the shack lady when she was posting in a community tab about the Arizona desert and a body being found? Is there any link there or is that another missing person? If you're present, shack lady, feel free to clear that up if uh, you wish to. Okay. Let's just check the comments out, what people have to say. Martha Martin, is there anything online about this man's son missing? I haven't heard about it. And there's um, a little one there, Daniel Robinson. Yeah, okay. So there's a little link there, some website. I guess could have a look at some point maybe. Ophel Lewis. Yes, please help support his father as he fights for finding his son as well. It's just heartbreaking as law enforcement dropped the ball investigating sooner on both these young men. Mm-hmm. I mean... I don't know. This is some sometimes it can get a bit awkward, right? You got all these different missing people and obviously they're all as important as one another, but when it comes to focus covering a case, do you take them all on or do you just take on a singular case to try and solve or understand? In an awkward way it can become a bidding war without the use of money. More of a, uh, like attention, you know, if you don't Focus on one person, you get criticised because you're focusing on someone else. 
and you've got to try and take everyone under the wing and then it gets messy and then you get tired and then you can't focus. It's like, whoa, whoa. That's why it's good. It is a range of different people. Some people cover this, some people cover that, right? Uh, Dan Robinson, The Georges and the Desert, part one on YouTube. Okay. Candice Cooley leaves a response. What does she say? Everyone deserves to be found and the more awareness to these cases, the better. And that's what people on YouTube have done, not just Dylan Rounds, but other cases too. But at times, Candice Cooley has called them out. Mm. Shonda Schaefer Young, I believe there was a motive behind Dylan's disappearance. You believe there was a motive? Well, some people say that's true, others just think Brenna snapped heat at the moment. Debbie Blates. These agencies must do better, it's their job, and it's why these agencies were put in place to begin with. I don't know what is going on in this world, but they do not get to pick and choose who to help, just do better. Jennifer, Jennifer Cooley. Is Jennifer Cooley a Cooley-related family member, or is it just someone with the same last name? Does anyone know? She says, both cases are baffling. Much love to both families. I assume she's not part of it, the way she's worded that. Brittany Ortiz. Has it got anything to do with Marcos Ortiz? <laughs> Probably not. It's just interesting there how you get a collection of people with all similar like surnames and stuff with others. Brittany says, because each job is a line item that can be billed, and no way the government cut police funds. Um, Heather Brown... Ellsworth, is there a baker or baker's rock in Nevada? I woke up with these words last week after looking for updates on Dylan. I know there are no coincidences. If there's a baker or baker's rock, look there. Pamela Lutsk says, Heather Brown, I just googled it, and there is a baker's archaeological site in Nevada. Okay. Max Sweat, I think we are all desperately searching for answers from whatever deities we believe in just remember that the minds is complex not trying to belittle you experience as i had my first vision ever when thinking about dylan's case but as we are all worrying and thinking it could literally just be a thought or stress response i understand what you're saying but there has only been a few times this has happened and i've learned to listen it may have nothing to do with dylan but it's definitely got something to do with something that will come to light there is no coincidence like, this is the thing, if you get these spiritual people and they are, like, 90 to 95% accurate in what they say or what they feel and experience and predict, then okay. But majority of humans, they might think this, might think that. Does it actually happen? No. So you've got to be realistic at the same time. Now, does anyone know of the Daniel Robinson case? Is there a lot of psychic readings, tarot cards and all that dodgy stuff going on in that case? Because it definitely happened in Kenny Beach. It's happened most definitely in Dylan Rounds. What about any others, you know? Like, I don't know if it's been talked about as much in the Dylan Rounds case, but whilst people have been calling out YouTubers for supposedly creating misinformation, uh, some being boots on ground in areas they're not supposed to, what about the card readers and the psychics that are possibly creating false information of locations to check out, Right. So just like the situation with Kurt Wadsworth, in a way. As well, just, you know, I don't know, kind of a bit of confusion, right? Rene Stout. Human trafficking keeps rearing its ugly head in my mind since it's so prevalent today. I saw on YouTube uh, a young man that was kidnapped and taken to Mexico through human trafficking. Hmm. Valerie Trees Montgomery, my prayers are with both today. Two years old was found alive and well in Florida, just like a miracle brought him home. Pray for the miracles. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, that's it for that one. And then if we just scroll back up to the next post, we can come across the Candice Cooley one. Okay. Let's just see. It should be this, it should be just above this one. There we go. So here you go, Candice Cooley, 12 hours ago, so more recent. Candice Cooley says, 
as this winter is beginning to end, our family finds ourselves facing yet another season change without Dylan or any answers. We are continuing our fight quieter than before, but there is a reason for this. We will never stop fighting for Dylan. Okay. So, to be honest, like, in my opinion, when reading that first, like, sentence or mini paragraph out, it sounds almost backwards. It doesn't sound that good at all. Whilst previous, and we've seen on the news articles, we've seen on the East Idaho News Channel, how the family are optimistic for progress made in Dylan's case, that they might get an answer sooner than later. And then here, it's been worded as um, yet another season change without Dylan or any answers. Any answers. So they've got no answers. Well, if you've got no answers, then all that information you have which you can't reveal, then I assume that information doesn't yield any answers to where Dylan is at, right? So it kind of feels a bit flat. You know what I'm saying? Just based off first-time impressions when you read this, it doesn't sound as good as you think or as what you've seen previous. Um, but the bit where it says, we're continuing the fight quieter than before, that's true. But there is a reason for this. But she hasn't explained at this moment. Let's see what else. Candice Cooley says, We are getting many requests about the sunflower seeds for Dylan's legacy. We will announce all the information in mid-March. Yeah, as she said previous. And start working on places to distribute them. Please be aware that we have not asked for any donations towards Dylan's legacy. There is a lot of stuff out there online claiming to be part of Dylan's legacy, but it is all fake and has nothing to do with bringing Dylan home. This page is the only place we will post about it. Please remember, if it does not come from myself or Justin, it is not true. Okay. I mean, if you put aside Lance Kelly, Kimber when they did that like donation page thing for the cadaver dog, raising funds for it. From your own experiences, everyone in the chat right now, have you witnessed any other pages which are doing like donations, direct fundraisers in the name of Dylan Rounds? Have you seen any? Because I myself have not seen any at all, okay? Okay, you might get people on... YouTube that might have uh, this link to that site, this link to that site where you, you can give this or give that. But, you know, some do it directly in the name of Dylan, but not for finding Dylan. And then others just do it completely set aside from the case as a whole, right? I've just not seen any direct fund raises or GoFundMes. I've just not seen them. If you have, Feel free to share your experiences down below. Share what you've seen, what you've heard, right? Is it Candice Cooley exaggerating again, saying, oh, I've seen lots of donation pages online when she hasn't really? I don't know. I wouldn't know. But yeah. Is there anything else here to really look at? Talking about Dylan's legacy, the whole mid-March. Yeah, she said that a couple of times now, so there's a consistency there with that. Um, there's a little photo, Dylan's legacy. Oh, I see what they've done. Okay, so they've got the sunflower, of course. Um, wheat, is that? And underneath it, they've actually got a drone, which is kind of interesting. Assume the drone is like the full spectral drone looking for Dylan. Interesting design, in a way. Um, can we check the comments out? Just let them load up. And just see what's being said. Start from the top. Linda says thank you. Thank you. Terry Fedder. Dylan remains in my thoughts. And I've not forgotten him. Pray for justice. He knows where Dylan is. Who? The waterboard. Oh. Is Terry talking about Brenner? I wish they'd waterboard that bastard. He knows where Dylan is. And he needs to do the one right thing he's ever done in his life and tell the truth. I wish I knew how to get him to talk justice for Dylan and peace for his family. 
we will never forget you, Dylan, your work ethic, your vision, your fearlessness. This is what I mean. Whilst, yeah, it's understandable people's frustrations, but if you got someone like Terry or other humans out there, if they were in the presence of Brenner somehow, or let's just say if Brenner was walking free, then that sort of action probably would take place and it would be recklessness. Recklessness that could definitely harm the case. You put aside the whole talk about evidence being contaminated, but the actual person of interest, the actual suspect, if they get harmed, silenced in other ways, then what can you do? It, I don't think it would end well. So, you know, even if Brenner hasn't been truly charged yet, at least he's in a place where he's safe from anyone you know, derailing the case, if you know what I'm saying, unless there was anyone in Weber County Jail that took Brenner out, hurt him or something, or killed him. I don't know if that's possible, right? I mean, does anyone know if Brenner has gotten into any fights in uh, Weber County Jail? Has that actually happened, or is he just keeping to himself? And what's the overall health and condition of Brenner? Because I've not really talked about that since either would be interesting to know. Actually, I believe it was Indiana who said she saw a photo of Brenner and it's kind of like an updated one of him, how he appeared, how he looked, but she couldn't find the photo ever again and he was like sat down or something. I'm not quite sure what she's talking about. I mean, I had a photo previous, but it was to do with the news report of Brenner in the jail sitting down. I think he was in blue overalls. If you remember, and he was wearing some glasses, his beard, shaven. Yeah, don't miss the same one. Uh, Isaac, prayers. I have a terrible plight with my... Okay. It's just mainly prayers. Boyd Porter, I've never stopped looking whether I'm taking firewood to a neighbour or making sure they get to town to get supplies. I can't help but look for your family. It's always in mind. Come a long way. Got in my car today and saw the bead necklace hanging from my mirror. I got out of my car and saw the sunflower sticker on the back. I thought to myself, they've come a long way since we got these. Keep the faith. Yep. Annette Costin, I, I may live across the world from Australia. Okay. Yeah, it's mainly just prayers, right? I just thought there might have been something else, like questions. Now, that appears to be it. So, you know, let me know your thoughts. Like, what do you think about the post by Candice Cooley? Does it reveal much to you? Is it disappointing? Is it underwhelming? Is there any contradictions made here? Hypocrisy? Feel free to list it down below if I haven't noticed it myself, right? I think now we'll transition onto that forum page and continue reading. Here we are. So we're on the forum, you scroll down. Following on from Kimster responding back to a link to do with a full document. Huh, I think we may have seen this last time, the link, but I didn't click on it because it was going to redirect me. And it said something about Amazon News, and I thought, Amazon News? That sounds a bit dodgy, but we will take a look at it in a second. Let's just read this. Kimster says, sorry if I glossed over someone else's observation, but I was surprised to read in the court document that Brenner is friends with DR and his family. I'm confused. Was he ever employed by them? Am I missing the obvious? Let's check it now. So here we are, right? It says one of five. I don't know if we'll be able to access the other pages or not, but I guess we can just read for it. Take in mind, you may have already seen this before. I might have already seen this before. I do remember looking back at a court document, but I don't know if it was about... Well, it wasn't to do with a singular thing. It was to do with the overall stuff that also took place back in 2021 as well. But let's just read for it anyway. See if um, things are up to scratch, any inconsistencies, anything of interest. If you've seen this before, if you haven't, feel free to leave your you know comments down below. So, let me just say, Higgins, attorney in the United States District Court, District of Utah, plaintiff versus James Brenner, defendant, ah, here we go, complaint, counts one, felon in possession of a firearm, of a firearm, magistrate judge, Daphne, before Daphne, okay, 
appears to be undersigned on who does prison says. Count one, the felon in possession of a firearm. On or about June 8th, 2022, in the District of Utah, James Brenner, defendant herein, knowing he had been convicted of a crime punishable by a term of imprisonment exceeding one year, did knowingly possess a firearm, to wit, a 22 caliber Winchester rifle, and the firearm was in an affecting commerce, all in violations of 18 USC. Okay. So yeah, that 22 rifle, which Brenner supposedly stole from another trailer, which Kurt Wadsworth described as um, Ed Harshberger's trailer. That's where Brenner got it from, supposedly. Um, and then passed it on to Don Haitley to hide. Eventually, Don Haitley surrendered it in, had an interview with the FBI, and grasped on Brenner. And that's why Brenner got arrested. Okay? Let's see if it's mentioned here. Ah, page two. So it's all here. Good. Af Aphrodite? Is it Aphrodite? Aphrodite? In support of complaint and arrest warrant. Complaint Jeremiah Folk being duly sworn hereby states this felony complaint is based on information obtained for an investigation consisting of the following. One, your Affian is a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation currently assigned to the Violent Crimes Task Force in Salt Lake City Field Office. Information contained in this complaint is based on the investigation I conducted along with other special agents of the FBI and investigators from Box out of County Sheriff's Office. Two, on May 30th, 2022, Box Elder County Dispatch received a call of a missing 19-year-old male, initials DR, Dylan Rounds. He was last seen in Lucin, Utah area on this day. DR contacted a relative by phone and told them that he was putting the grain truck into the shelter, also known as the, you know, the grain shed, okay? Um... And as for contacting a relative by phone, that was the grandmother, Karen Rounds, okay? Says, the shelter for the grain truck was reported to be on a parcel of land owned by Bucks Elder Land and Livestock, owner initials JC, and is adjacent to two other parcels that are owned by SH and RI. These parcels are open to each other and collectively used together. Okay, interesting. I'm glad it words it like that. You get an idea of who owns what parcel of land. And some of you may already know about this, but for others, you know, it just provides a, a deeper understanding, okay? So we'll just read back over it again to make sure it's clear. The shelter for the grain truck was reported to be on parcel of land owned by Box Elder Land and Livestock, owner initials JC, and is adjacent to two other parcels that are owned by SH and RI. These parcels are open to each other and collectively used together. Okay. So, owner initials JC. Does anyone know who JC is? leave a comment down below, okay? Leave a comment in the live chat. Where it says SH, um, not sure about that. RI, not sure about that. Who is that other guy? John Sheldon. Is it John Sheldon or something? Or something Sheldon. That doesn't seem to pop up here in terms of being an owner. So is that a lie? Hmm. Because most of these initials I'm seeing on screen right now, I have never seen before or heard of in the Dylan Rounds case, I'll be honest. Okay? So if anyone can clear that up or give a bit of insight behind this, okay? But let's carry on reading. Number three. The subject in this case, an adult male named James Brenner has no ownership in the land parcels mentioned above and is squatting in a trailer. Okay. Page three. Located on the land, the missing 19-year-old male, Dylan Round's property is a five-mile walk towards the southeast of where Brenner was currently living. 
Brenner and another Lucin resident, D.H., also known as Don Haightley, were considered family friends of Dylan Rounds and his family. Can give a little description into that. Let's just do a little checkpoint there, okay? The reason why that is, because as described by Justin Rounds in uh, their last Heavy D interview inside of the Grain Shed, basically, Don Haightley, at some point, was introduced to Larry Rounds, Dylan's grandfather, and it was to do with sometime in winter 2020, when Dylan was doing farm work, Don Haightley was assisting, Don Haightley supposedly got run over by some equipment, some vehicle, a few times, and he was fairly injured, and he had to recuperate and recover, but he was in the presence of the Rounds family, or some of the Rounds family, uh, became good friends with Larry Rounds, grandfather of Dylan, and um, they helped, including Dylan, help Don Haightley get to medical appointments or hospital visits to help, you know, get him through the, the recovery phase. So there was like um, a friendship developed from that, right? So that's why they're friends, okay? Family friends. It says... In searching for the missing 19-year-old male, Brenner was interviewed by Box Elder County Sheriff's Office on June 7th, 2022. D.H. Don Haightley was also subsequently interviewed by law enforcement. Okay, so there was, you know, there was a level of activity in the early stages, some form of interview, but what Candice Cooley was getting at was not much was done after that from the looks of it. But... You know, let's just keep on reading. Um, it says, number four, on or about June 11th, 2022, Box Elder County, in their search for the missing 19-year-old male, Dylan Rounds, requested assistance from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, and Davis County Sheriff's Office, two of which Candice Cooley has praised in a positive way for their assistance. The fifth, not the fifth, Number five, on June 16th, 2022, Box Elder County Sheriff's Office, with the assistance of the FBI, executed a search warrant at the trailer where Brenner was living. During that search, ball ammunition, ignition caps, black powder, and speed loads, all related to muzzle loading, were located and photographed in the trailer, but the items were not seized at this time by Box Elder County Sheriff's Office. There were no muzzle loader firearms located in the trailer at that time. Okay, so June 16th. So it seems to be like a timeline, this, which is actually useful. Is there anything I need to analyze there which I've not seen before? Search warrant. There was also a search warrant to do with um, Chase Venstra as well. That's like when they were saying about Chase Venstra has never been a part of the Dylan Rounds investigation, but there was like a separate investigation going on with him as well because of felon of uh, owning firearms too. Okay. So they found all those stuff related to muzzle loading. They were photographed in the trailer, but the items were not seized at this time by Box Elder County Sheriff's Office. Okay. So why was it not seized at the time by Box Elder County Sheriff's Office? Did they delay things? Were they lazy? I don't know. Why not do it on the spot? But it's interesting that they've actually photographed the trailer. That'd be interesting to see what the trailer looks like of Brenner's, I guess. Um, yeah. Let's move on. Number six. On June 20th, 2022, a friend and neighbour of Brenner... D.H. Don Haightley was interviewed by Box Elder County Sheriff's Office and the FBI. During that interview, Don Haightley advised that after Dylan Rounds went missing and sometime after Brenner's initial June the 7th, 2022 interview with Box Elder County Sheriff's Office, Brenner brought three black powder guns over to Don Haightley's residence and asked him to safe keep them. When Don Haightley asked why, Brenner stated that he needed to do this for his own safety 
and that the last time he had trouble with the law, they took everything from him, and he did not want the things he had left to be taken again. Don uh, Haitley agreed to store the muzzle loaders for him at the time. Okay. To be honest, what I've just read there is something that has been talked about probably several times now, just by general public, right? But I'll be honest, it's never gone into my head properly when hearing about it. I've always heard about passing on the guns to Don to keep a hold of, but for some reason, it wasn't going into my mind that it was post Dylan's disappearance. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, it might be simple, yeah. Like, oh, why do you not know? Mm. Does it change the whole um, methods? You know, if I've done my analysis in the past of how things played out, does this change it? I'm not quite sure, to be fair. I mean, if it's to do with Brenner being responsible for taking out Dylan with the use of a firearm, then why does he have to hand over to Don multiple firearms if only one was truly used. Wouldn't it make more sense just to hide that one? Bury it far away as possible. What would be the point in passing it on to Don? Is it just in case if they do find the guns, then it'll be assumed that Don is the one to be blamed and is responsible, so he gets in trouble. Maybe that's why Don didn't like the idea of holding on to them because he may have thought that Brenner was trying to set him up. Do you think that's a possibility? Aside from Don being maybe a bit of a snake in the grass, we'll do a poll now. Do you feel that there's a chance that Brenner passed on the guns to Don Haitley because one of them was used to take out Dylan Rounds? Um, I don't know if we can do a follow-up poll as well, maybe follow it up in the live chat section as a response. If that's, if that's the case, do you feel that Brenner wanted to shift the blame onto Don Haley just in case it did go wrong and they did find the guns? Let me know your thoughts, right? But let me just reread that. Adv Don Haley advised that after Dylan Rounds went missing, after Brenner's initial June the 7th, 2022 interview, Wait, and sometime after Brenner's... Um, Brenner brought back guns over to Don Haley's residence. Wait, is it saying Brenner brought back the powder guns to Don Haley's residence after June the 7th? Is that the case? It must be. Because, like... When Brenner was actually arrested for good, I think that was June the 16th, um, he was taken in June the 10th, but then released on June the 11th, something around that date. And then he had a bit of time in between to walk free. And this is talking about June the 7th. Is that what it means? It must be. Hmm. I think just to really summarise it, okay, in the chat right now, can anyone confirm that when Brenner brought these guns over to Don Haitley's place to keep a hold of them, was it after Dylan Rounds went missing? Yes or no? Feel free to answer right now, okay? It can be quite useful and helpful, that, you know what I'm saying? But the bit about Brenner saying he needed to do it for his own safety because I guess in the past he's gotten in trouble and it's backfired for him. But why does he feel like he's going to get in trouble once again? It's as if Brenner knows that something's happened to Dylan so Brenner doesn't want to be in possession of these firearms because he thinks he'll be the first one questioned as he's close to, closest to Dylan in proximity. Now, obviously, from now what we've heard of with time and how the case has gone. Yeah, it's being aimed at Brenner, Brenner being the one responsible, evidence pointing to him, him being linked to certain evidence with prints and stuff. But Brenner himself, the way he's like, oh, I, I don't want to, I don't want like a reoccurrence to happen, don't want to get in trouble, want to try and, you know, 
keep low, reduce heat levels. It's as if he already knows that he might get in trouble because he's done something and he's responsible. And that's most likely to do with Dylan, okay? And the, the possession of firearms, you know, that could complicate things. Yeah. I mean, I do remember this little section of it. I might have been in a previous document we looked at. What was this? Number four. The interview Don Haley turned over the three muzzle loaders to Box Elder County Sheriff's Office, who booked them into evidence. Seven. On June 21st, 2022, Don Haley was again interviewed by the FBI. During this interview, Don Haley advised that Brenner had also brought him a 22 caliber rifle around the same time he had brought over the muzzle loaders. Don Haley told us that he didn't mention the 22 caliber rifle when interviewed before because he had been owed money by the rifle's original owner and that he felt that he should have claimed over the 22 caliber rifle that Brenner asked him to store to cover the debt. He explained to us that the rifle had been left in a trailer on the property where Brenner had been living prior to Brenner living there by a person who owed Don Haitley money. Brenner, upon moving into the trailer, had taken possession of, of it. Don Haitley knew that Brenner wasn't allowed to have firearms because of his criminal history. Don Haitley turned over to the FBI the 22 caliber rifle and case that Brenner had personally handed to him and had asked him to store. The rifle was loaded with five rounds of 22 caliber ammunition. Okay, so it says, by a person who owed Don Haitley money. Does anyone know who owed Don Haitley money? Was it Ed Harshberger? Yes, no. If you, if you do know, feel free to uh, list it, okay, down below. Um, but, I don't know, it's just like the way it's been said. Brenner was the one that stole it. Was Brenner stealing the weapon for to help Don Haitley out in some way? I don't know, or he just wanted it himself because he thought it looked cool. He liked it, maybe. So, Don Haitley kind of feeling at the time that maybe I should hold on to it because, you know, cover the debt. Hmm... Anyway, number eight, 22 caliber rifle is a Winchester model, 6922SLORL. On the rifle, it says made in the New Haven Con. No serial number was located. Nine, on June 21st, 2022, another search warrant was conducted at the trailer where Brenner was currently living. During this warrant, Box Elder County Sheriff's Office seized a muzzle loader, one box of .45 lead round ball ammunition, one box of spare .570 lead ball, one box of Federal .45 lead ball ammunition, ignition caps, four pounds of Hornady black powder and speed loads and booked them into evidence. Okay. Page 5 of 5. 10. On May 21st, 2012, James Brenner was sentenced to 33 months in prison for a conviction of felon in possession of a firearm. Brenner also has additional felony convictions on his criminal history. Based on the foregoing information, your affiant respectfully requests that an arrest warrant be issued for James Brenner for a violation of 18 USC. Dated this day of June. Okay. EastIdahoNews.com. Okay, so that was actually quite useful, that being able to read that out, understand the parcels of land, who owns what. Considering Candice Cooley never opened up with the names of those individuals, she just kept saying, it's irrelevant, it's irrelevant, it doesn't mean much, we're not going to say the names. And it was like, oh. but at least it was worded her. It also provided key dates, time stamps in a way, or a timeline, I should say, timeline of events, how things follow through. I know to some people you would have seen this before, but for others, at least it's all put here in a clear, concise fashion, okay? 
So I might adjust the title of this video considering we've gone through like a, an official court document of like a timeline of Brenner and Dom. That's all good. So I think we should return back to the forum and just continue reading, I guess, and see how these people respond to, um, I guess, that document. So what's it? Sorry if I glossed over someone else's observation. Red court document. Brenner is friends with DR and his family. I'm confused. No, it, it was saying that uh, Don Haley is uh, friends with Dylan Rounds and family. I think must have misunderstood that. Kimster. So, someone owed Don Haley money and that person lived in the trailer and left their gun there. Then Brenner moved in and gave the gun to Don Haley and Don Haley was going to keep it since the original owner, in brackets, we don't know that that person's initials right, owed him money. The riffraff surrounding this kid is making my hair stand up on the back of my neck. Okay, so you can kind of summarise it there. But if this is to do with Ed Harshberger, Ed Harshberger doesn't live in Lucen. Well, back then he didn't live in Lucen, but he supposedly had a trailer on the land near the grain shed. Is that correct? That Ed Harshberger had a trailer which he didn't live in near the grain shed. Is that correct? Just feel free to confirm it in the chat or if you need to correct it, do that as well. And if that's the case, then I assume that um, Ed Harshberger owed Don Haley money. How much? I don't know. He didn't really say. Move on. Kimster says, Idaho Falls. The family of a missing man from eastern Idaho is demanding a private investigator stop his involvement in the search for their son. Okay. A man from eastern Idaho is demanding. I assume that's Justin Rounds. Dylan Rounds, 19, vanished over a month ago whilst farming in the rural town of Lucen near the Utah-Nevada border. He last spoke with his grandparents May 28th. Grandmother, I mean. Since then, nobody has heard from him other than a pair of Rounds boots on the property. There has been no sign of him anywhere. This must be copy and paste from a news article. James Terry with Gulf Coast Investigation in Florida has been investigating the case, but on Thursday, Idaho Falls-based attorney Ronald Swafford sent Terry a cease and desist letter on behalf of Round's parents, Justin Round's and Kenny's Cooley. In quotes, my office has been retained by the Round's and Cooley families to send this letter to you and demand that you immediately cease and desist your continued non-unauthorized non involvement in the Dylan Rounds case. Swafford wrote, you have made malicious, unfounded and incorrect statements and have made verbal and written attacks on the Rounds and Cooley families. Jim Terry has spoken about the case on videos posted online and Swafford wrote that Terry's words are damaging the integrity and effectiveness of the entire investigation. Since rounds disappeared, multiple searches have been conducted in the Lucen and Montello, Nevada areas. The FBI is assisting the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office with the investigation and people who knew rounds have been interviewed by law enforcement. Round's parents say they're focused on finding their son and don't want Jim Terry's private investigation to be a distraction. In quotes, your actions are diverting the focus from finding Dylan Rounds to what appears to be your own personal vendetta and slash or to promote yourself at the expense of the truth. Swafford wrote, the family of Dylan Rounds do not want to waste their time, resources and energy with any further action against you in this matter and therefore request your immediate compliance. Okay, so I guess that was just like quoting from that East Idaho News um, article. I've never read it before, so that's, once again, that's a first for me. You see, this is what I mean. Just because I might say this or say that, or I've covered lots of videos, there's still a fair bit which I may not have seen or heard of, right? Which is normal, just like how other people may have not heard of things. Just let me know down below if, if you're seeing certain stuff for the first time ever. Um, This must have been a response by guess who. These cases sure bring out the crazies. Very familiar with a case that had a rogue investigator that made things so much worse too. 
And that is just one of the crazies that came out. He couldn't even get anybody to hire him for a penny. Okay. Regina says, no, I wouldn't say it's obvious. The way I understand it, Jim rarely helped on the farm and even Don only helped when Dylan needed help with things he didn't know, such as mechanical work or when the work required more than one person. Okay, so this is jumping back to Dylan Rounds, Brenner and Don Haley, that situation. Okay. Mel 70. I wonder if that's the Mel... That's appeared on my channel at some point in time. I don't know. Mel says, it looks desolate. Dirt, no vegetation, no wildlife, no way. Uh, farmers usually have guns, rifles, shotguns. People that live in desolate areas are alone. Kind of like the UK, some farms with shotguns. What's this one? She must not be named. Box Elder County has public to stop searching area for missing Dylan Rounds. Okay, we might have seen this before, but we'll just read it out for the sake of it. Box Elder County Sheriff's Department is giving some insight into their search for Dylan Rounds. The Sheriff's Office said there are no organised searches planned and they're asking the public not to search the area. They said searching the area has the potential to compromise the investigation. The Sheriff's Office has also released a statement from the Rounds family who echo the request for the public to let law enforcement conduct their search in peace. As a family, we're not asking for or requesting any additional public searches for Dylan Rounds at this time. We, re we request that everyone allow law enforcement to continue their organised investigation without any hindrance or interference in order to avoid jeopardising the investigation. We thank everyone for their continued support in finding Dylan Rounds. Grandma Bear says, hmm, my God, that's the shortest response by Grandma Bear ever. Okay. I think what we've noticed now, we're in July the 6th. So all the other uh, pages we've looked at previous from page 1 to page 17, it's been through June and now we're in a new month. That's interesting. Oh, what's this one? New person of interest named in disappearance of Dylan Rounds. So this is obviously an older article, but we'll just read what it says. A new person of interest has been named in the disappearance of 19-year-old Dylan Rounds Thursday. In an unsealed indictment from the Utah District Court, Chase Venstra has now been added to the list of suspects being questioned in the missing person case. Already, that's very interesting. Where is this from? ABC4.com. And yet the police said Chase Venstra was never a part of the investigation to begin with. And Candice Cooley echoed and passed on those words in a past interview on the East Idaho News channel, right? And yet it's been worded here that Chase Venstra at one point was treated as a suspect and was questioned. Interesting. So instead of people saying, oh, Chase Venstra, never a part of the investigation, they should be saying he was at one point, but maybe not so much now with the alibis that have come out with time. Interesting. So far, at least three people have been questioned. I assume that's Brenner, Don Haitley, and Chase Venstra. One person was indicted on unrelated charges, Brenner, I assume. Another is in custody on an outstanding warrant, and the third remains a free man. Okay, so maybe I got that the wrong way round. I assume one of them is Venstra, unrelated charges. Another is in custody on an outstanding warrant. I'm assuming that's to do with Brenner, the outstanding warrant. And then the third remains a free man. I assume that's Don Haitley. Okay, in that order. The new person of interest, Venstra. Well, actually, no, that's, that's confusing that. Because the way it's worded, so far, at least three people have been questioned. One indicted the other one in custody, and then the other one a free man. And then it goes on to say, the new person of interest, is this a fourth individual, Venstra? Okay, well, if that's if Venstra is the fourth individual, then what about the other three? Don Haitley, Brenner, and who else? Kurt Wadsworth remains a free man. But that's never really been talked about, Kurt's name, in these official articles. So I don't know if it's been poorly worded this. Mm, a bit messy. Let's just read it. 
Venstra is a man who authorities say asked rounds for a ride just a few days before he disappeared, the 25th of May, near Tacoma Road. Authorities say Venstra was seen bloodied and barefoot whilst walking along a road near Luton, Tacoma Road, when he approached rounds for a ride, which was to go to, back to Montello. Venstra is a convicted felon and has been held in the Davis County Jail since June 4th. He was indicted on unrelated firearm charges and violations. And hasn't it, I don't know if it still applies now, but at least in the past December, November 2022, his um, extra, oh, how you say his word? Extra, ex, extradition, uh, fuck me, stupid prat. Extradition was delayed a few times. Did that ever go through in the end? I'm not quite sure. Another suspect, James Brenner, who is also Round's neighbour, has also been arrested and charged with weapons violations. Right, okay. So I assume they're just basically explaining who is who when, when it said at least three people have been questioned. I assume that. Okay. Second person tied to a missing northern Utah man faces federal charge. Oh. A second person who is believed to have had contact with Dylan Rounds shortly before he disappeared now faces federal weapon charges. Chase Montgomery Venstra, 41 years of age, was charged in federal court on July 1st with being a restricted person in possession of a firearm. That complaint was unsealed on Tuesday when Venstra made his initial appearance in federal court. A judge ordered him to remain in custody pending his next hearing on July 19th. Right, so I guess it's just like updating from at the time. Because you've got to understand that in the early days of these different developments and people coming into light, at first they're mentioned as this person, person A, person B. Then it follows with their initials and then it follows with their full legal name. You see what I'm saying? Um, the action comes on heels of a complaint being filed against James Brenner, 58 years of age at the time, in the US District Court, Utah for being a felon in possession of a firearm. On Wednesday, an indictment was filed against Brenner on the same charge. An indictment is obtained after a case is reviewed by a grand jury. A judge on Wednesday ordered Brenner to remain in custody pending his arrangement on Friday. According to a petition filed by prosecutors requesting that Brenner remain in custody, he is considered a suspect in Round's disappearance. More so now, he's considered these days as a sole and only suspect. But no evidence supposedly points to anyone else. Hmm. She must not be named, says. So it seems like nothing we didn't know. Just officially named as a POI. Three people questioned. What does POI mean? I know POS means piece of shit. Hmm. Indicted on unrelated charges. Chase, the barefoot guy who got a ride from Dylan. In custody on warrant, James Jim. Brenner, who lived squatted on property near where Dylan kept his grain truck. Three, questioned and released. Owner of bar? Question mark. I'd say Don Haley, to be honest, because he was questioned by the FBI because um, of the whole gun situation. And he's a free man from then till now. Owner of the bar? Well, as a little update with that, at the time, I was under the impression that owner of the bar, Saddle Saw Bar, who we're talking here, by she she who must not be named, Kurt Wadsworth, because Kurt Wadsworth has come up a few times and was talked about in his forum page previous. But in recent time, Weezer further reinforced and confirmed that the owner of Saddle Saw Bar and Cowboy Bar and Grill is by Troy. Troy Wadsworth. Okay. But I guess Kurt Wadsworth does shifts in Saddle Saw Bar, I guess. But not so much now with it being shot. Guess who? More like son of owner of bar, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Son of... No, no, no. Not yeah. No. Ugh. Guess who? Well, doesn't it, he sound like mighty fine neighbour material? Hmm. He does seem like a better suspect than Chase, in my opinion. Literally lives at Dylan's last seen location. I wonder what type of physical evidence and forensics they have. This is to do with in response to Brenner. Okay. The current totality of information gathered from the many interviews and searches, along with the analysis of both physical and evidence and forensic data, has identified James Brenner as a suspect. Oh no, Grandma Bear with a fucking long paragraph. It wasn't that long until she comes in. Here we go. Grandma Bear says, both 
here ordered to remain in custody pending their next court appearance, both on the weapons charges, both charged federally, both known to have had contact with Dylan not long before he disappeared. I wonder if or hope they are watching them whilst in custody. Who knows what they will say or might shake it. Well, they've not said anything yet. Kept quiet. As for watching the case whilst in custody, that doesn't seem to be the case because when Karen Round's grandmother contacted uh, Brenner via that phone call, that prison phone call, not prison, jail phone call, I should say, Brenner seemed to you know, say a lot of incorrect stuff and basically Karen corrected him on a lot and then that led to Brenner not liking what he heard. So he ended up saying, no more talking to me, talk to my legal team, and that was it. So he's not been able to follow along the case or where things are at, so, you know, he doesn't know Brenner. I guess that applies to Venstra as well, I assume. Uh, so Grandma Bess says, so this Brenner doesn't sound like a very nice man, and recently Chase had been barefoot and bleeding and looking for a ride. I wonder how he came to be that way out there and whether he too lost his shoes or boots as Dylan maybe did. Does someone have a thing for attacking or fighting, taking weapons and leaving men without shoes to walk back, walk back to town, walk home, etc.? Maybe someone took Dylan further out into the desert and did this and something happened from there where Dylan didn't get back. Maybe someone leaves them shoeless and beat up and some make it and some don't. All just thoughts my speculation. I mean, the whole... To, uh, thing to do with some people start fights getting into fights well Brenner does and a few of us with time and it's like history repeats itself with the same people as for stealing things finding stuff burying things that's like the likes of Venstra and maybe a little bit Robert Avila's as well with their burglaries and stuff screwing people over Grandma Bess says we don't see people called POIs and suspects very often and especially suspects and they do come right out and identify him as one Oh, POIs, person of interest. I get it now. Yep. A bit late, but there you go. Regina says in response to a previous comment, I wonder too, not the type to charge apparently or not strong enough. That's bothersome. But also bothersome to me is the fact they've actually named two people. One's a suspect and one's a person of interest. I mean, unless there's some sort of association between the two that I'm not aware of and Ellie believed they conspired, I'm at a loss at how evidence can point to both, yet is enough to name anyone anything. By the way, at this point, to my mind anyway, Jim wasn't squatting because info from Kerr is that one of those three parcel owners, SH, I believe, put him, Brenner, out there as a watchdog. The issue, the issue squatting appears to be the fact that the fifth wheel isn't on SH's parcel, but the same parcel as the grain truck shelter owned by JC anyway. That's the situation, and to me it's plain silly, but whatever. As for the owner of the fifth wheel, it was my impression that Don owned it, but right now, I'm not so sure about that. So after reading that, if any of you can clear that up, feel free to do so. I've not really took it in too much because with all these initials, it gets a little bit annoying, right? Just write out the full name, okay? Because not everyone's going to know by initials. People do get confused, you know what I'm saying? But, I mean, I did hear about, I think it was when Pancakes re-uploaded, I think it was part one or part two of uh, Pancake's first set of interviews with Kurt Wadsworth on the phone and Kurt talking about uh, Brenner being a watchdog out there and so on. Yeah. JC, John C, SH, Sheldon H, I, I, I don't know. Dodgy names these as well. If anyone can clear up these abbreviated names... Maybe it's more practical in the comments section. If you can, like, type the abbreviated name and then after it equals their full name and repeat that with the others, that will be appreciated, okay? That will be very helpful. Let's move on. Guessing. I was bothered by the squatter comments when it seemed he had permission to be there. Just because one isn't paying any rent doesn't necessarily make them a squatter. So this is what I mean. If that's really the truth then those official court documents 
have got a bit of misinformation within them. If that's truly the case. And if not, then the official documents are true and everything else is just speculation. Mm, bit awkward, that. Regina. It appears to me that he actually did have permission and now that I think about it, that document describes the parcels as open and used by all owners. Yeah, it said like shared between them all, which to me negates the fact that the fifth wheeler is part on one parcel rather than another. Perhaps it's a matter of who owns the fifth wheel, although I think Kurt's impression, or he possibly misspoke or I misunderstood, is like Jim owned it. Hmm, okay. What's this one? Missing in Utah. Suspect Dylan Brown's disappearance has violent past. Brenner, yeah. She must not be named. Says, she acknowledges that the key to solving Dylan's disappearance is with Brenner. He has the answers, she said. That's what Candice Cooley said. During Brenner's detention hearing, prosecutors said he is a danger to the community and should not be back out on the streets. True, I remember hearing that. He currently has an outstanding warrant from Boxelder County where he allegedly beat up a man using a lawn chair in 2021 and he also served time for attempted murder. I think the attempted murder may have been the Maryland incident due to a work dispute and he shot someone fatally or almost fatally. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, I think he choked someone at one point as well. And um, there was other like states or towns where he did bad things but you know I can't remember the exact names but I'm sure if someone types it in I'll definitely remember it again it'll pop back up and uh, you know the guy that Brenner beat up was about 70 years old or so um Bivins right Bivins and then there's another guy called Bibbins hmm it says in quotes oh he has a lengthy history of violence said Carlos Esqueda he had shot out before. He has a history of shooting at people, and despite that, he's a convicted felon. He continues to carry firearms. Brenner's attorney, Tessa Hansen, said the attempted murder in Maryland happened 30 years ago, and the charge was dropped to malicious shooting. She said he has only had two gun violations over the past 30 years. Not that bad, to be fair. Yeah, attempted murder. Okay, okay. So I'm glad that my accuracy or at least my memory is still kind of present, okay? So the fact that it's treated as attempted murder or seen as attempted murder, that Brenner had some kind of killer instinct way back then. He's not lost it, supposedly, I guess. But it says charge was dropped to a malicious shooting. But that's kind of like minimalization, minimalizing the impact of it. I mean, unless it's because they determined that Brenner just snapped. It was heat of the moment. So that's why it was just malicious, nasty, not planned, not exactly attempted. Hmm. Anyway, Hansen said she was unaware of the outstanding warrant in Box Elder County, the 2021 one, I'm sure. After hearing of his criminal past, Dylan's mother was even more convinced that Brenner was more than a suspect. In quotations, I think James did something to him, Cooley said. I think he snapped, and especially hearing more of it in court, because she was there to hear it. Brenner was denied bail and returned to Weber County Jail. Yep, still there now. His trial was set for September, but he will return to state court Monday in Box Elder County. He's facing more gun violations. And ever since September 2022, it's been delayed, 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 even into January, delayed February, as of right now. Um, 27th for February when it's going to happen. I did, it's 27th today. I'm not quite sure. I don't know what date it is. Clever me. But yeah, is it definitely going to happen? I'm not sure. Will it be covered? Maybe. Will channels do it on YouTube? I'm not quite sure if people will return. Like Zav Girl was known for looking at these court documents and Tyler Feller, but if they're doing other cases, maybe they won't hear about it. I don't know about Doug from No Thanks. Maybe he'll do an interview with Candice Cooley. Maybe that's what the, the whole point of this recent um, interview was, which didn't happen. Um, okay, so that's the end of that. Fair enough. So, in my opinion, I think that's been quite interesting, this video. You know, 
Of course, as a standard Dylan Rounds discussion, as we've previously done in continuing this forum page and seeing what's been talked about at that time, I think that page, page 18, has probably been the best page yet in terms of the amount of detail, the amount of dates, timelines, order of events, how things followed with Brenner, with Don, official court document, a link to it, which I've never got a hold of before from what I can remember. Yes, I've read a document similar to it, but not as much in depth from what I can remember, okay? Hopefully you found something new out of this video, this coverage, hopefully it makes sense. Um, I feel it's been a positive because it's like quite a lot of the legal stuff or quite a lot of the official events, it's like all been compiled into this one video of how things have played out. So I do need to be somewhat specific with the title of this video, okay, for the sake of it. So people can always refer back to this and check it themselves, right? Yeah. Um, if you are confused or something doesn't quite make sense, I guess leave a question down below and I'm sure it can be answered. But yeah, hopefully you found this video helpful and maybe you learned something new. I've saw a couple of things today which I've never seen before, so that's all good. Um, don't know if I'll be able to like process it all on the spot and remember it all. Different story, but it just provides a little insight, background check into the case and the people involved, right? Very interesting how Chase Venstra, how it was saying, person of interest, person of interest, person of interest, being questioned, being investigated, and then what? He's got nothing to do with the case. But why is it being worded as he is to do with the case? That's what I don't quite understand. A little bit dodgy there, the wording of it. Maybe it's just down to relevancy of the timing of when it, he was treated as a suspect and when he wasn't. But then for the police to say he was never a part of it to begin with, then why did you follow through that procedure? And why did these news articles treat him as a suspect? Well, that would be considered misinformation then. It was a little bit messy, that. But yeah, I think we'll leave it there so we don't go too heavy or too far. Luckily, a bit of a more focused video, I'd say, at least, because that entire page of that forum was to do directly with that document and stuff. And there's a possibility that when we do cover the next page, 19, next time, it might follow on from that. So just keep that in mind in case you're wondering where we're at with these conversations, okay? So see if there's any video ideas generated from this discussion or if anything that needs to be looked at covered on the maps we'll see time will tell what happens next thanks for watching i'll um see you next time goodbye and good night for now